Today, we're going to talk about a library we're, we're, we have been developing, and it's called PyWeb.io. And then we want to help you to upgrade your Python script to web tools. Right. So my name is Helene. You can call me uh, Helene, but uh, Helene is not real my name. If you ever seen this movie, <laughs> Shang-Chi is not the, the name of Shang-Chi. It is the real name is Shang-Chi. Right? And my name is Helene, if you are really sophisticated uh, um, in, uh, in uh, Asian language uh, pronunciation. And uh, I got a question, say, hey, what do you mean by web tool? Meaning that a tool can run in browser, right? And then it's uh, written in the uh, you know format of uh, uh, web application. Does it make sense? By the way, this uh, movie is really uh, fun to watch. I highly recommend everybody go to check it check it in the theater. All right. So first of all, let me show you some demo, right? I mean, like one year ago. Right, I never uh, you know, imagined I can write some something like this, but uh, you know, this is what I have uh, been working on since then. So here is a application. It's a very simple application. So let me let me run it. You have URL, and then you have a you know box for you to write down uh, your nickname. Right, for example, my I can call my Michael Jackson's right? my nickname. Oh, it's already taken. Maybe Michael Jackson Jr. is my nickname. I can start sending email, uh, sending on messages, right? And uh, somebody else, if happen online, happen to be on the same page, they can also uh, register their name. For example, let's call it uh, uh, Air Jordan. And then hello to you too. So the people in the first page can see. Uh, the uh, the message and who is in the room. So back and forth, right? This is a simple chat app application, right? This is the first uh, application I want to show you, and then you can also see hey, you can also uh, type in even longer uh, messages, right? And then you can submit as well. But then it's there. All right, we have another people joining the room. I don't know who is that, but uh, hey, hello, it's fun, and. Uh, Another thing I want to share with you is this, uh, you know, online dropping Gumoku game. Gumoku game is a very traditional Asian game, right? It's, it was uh, originated from Japan, I believe. So what happened? I mean, how do you play is you have a you know gold board and then you have a black and uh, white stone. So every time you, you take turns, right? And then every time you um, go one by one, you either uh, you you, for example, if your roll is black, you just take turns to put your stone on the, on the, on, the, on the board. So whoever had five in a row, either uh, uh, you know a diagonal or in a row or in a column, that's a winner. All right. So for example, I can put my my now my roll is black. So I think if I put it here, I have a better chance, right? And then meanwhile, I'm waiting for the other part to make their move. Right. This is a simple, simple web, you know, game, and uh, this is a second demo I want to show you. Right. And uh, another demo I want to show you is let me check this. This is a uh, markdown live preview. Right. So I can say I can write markdown, like uh, hello. I, now I can see the, uh, oh, I have a typo here. I can see the preview, live preview down there, right? I can also add other markdown things. And basically you have this editor and you have this and uh, live preview window. And then if you like, you can also download it, right? You can see the markdown file is downloaded here and you can open it using any editor uh, of your favorite, right? All three of them are simple applications. It looks like, hey, uh, this is uh, very fun to, to build and do. 
And let me show you another one. It's a little bit serious. So this is a job posting application we you know, built for uh, a friend. So what it does is, it first of all, it, it authenticate. Uh, it, it wanted you to go through some authentication. All right. So basically, we have the Slack authentication. And also, you can also put post your resume or post your jobs, uh, job posting. Let's first authenticate ourselves, myself. So one click, you go to this kind of uh, uh, authenticated page. You allow uh, this app to, uh, OK, now you're, you're authenticated. And then here, my name is pulled, right? And then rendered here. So this is form, right? And then you can have a buttons. So I, what I want to show you is the rich behavior of this form itself. So of course, this form you can input some title, right? For example, I want to job, I want to hire a software uh, engineer, right? And then I want to select companies, and uh, maybe uh, three companies. But uh, what if uh, my uh, my job is not from another company? I, I'm also able to to add a new company. And soon after you click this button, you pop up a new uh, page to show, okay, tell me more about this company, right? You can cancel it and then go back to the previous one. You can continue things. If you like, you can come back, hey, I want to do another company, right? And then let me show you uh, another thing for this company. Let's say these two uh, drop down menus are correlated, right? If I, if I search software engineers, the job function will be this. And if you IT operations, job function will change, right? Those are very rich behavior and they help you to build a very interesting forms. And uh, another thing is, for example, uh, if I input something, for example, I want to save. So it doesn't allow you to save. The reason is the form also have, have this validation functionality. So basically it recognizes you don't input a correct URL, right? Because this is not a, it's, it now start with HTTPS or HTTP and then it also have a space in it. So this logic, you can implement it very easily. So let's do, we write, we just save it and then we come back. All the previous one is still there, right? And then I, if you input everything correctly and things will save. And then this is the, the data I will just show you here. Of, of course, in real application, we're gonna show it to the customer. And then there's a you know success message and then allow you to allow user to post another job if they have more. And then after you click this button, you see your authentication is not going to be there because we already authenticated you once. The cookie is saved. We just you know let you submit the second uh, resume right away, uh, second job posting right away. All right, so this is four demos I want to show you. And then let's go back to the, uh, to the presentation. Okay, we get a, a question from Hugo. CTO Slacker is a, it's a, it's a group of people or mainly CTOs, and then they exchange information in that group, right? So let's do a simple, uh, you know, survey or some uh, or some uh, game, guessing game. So the first application, uh, you write down your markdown. This take about thirty lines of Python code, Python only, right? There's no other code, no YAML code, no JSON code, Python code, thirty lines, and. Uh, the second one, and this kind of chat window, the chat app, it take about uh, 75 lines of code. It have asynchronized functions, have a lot of things. And then the, uh, you know, the game on the online game take about 95, right? Because we spend some more energy um, building this board. Once you build this board, and then you also need to write the winner's you know, criteria. After that, Right, you pretty much do very simple things. It's a 95 line of code, it's good for you. Including a lot of comments, also empty lines. So the format is very easy to read. So 
this code is a little, this take a little bit more code because you see the functionality keep increasing, right? We have a lot of features. We have a uh, form validation. We have, uh, you know, uh, uh, communicate logic to run two different forms. And then we also have, uh, you know, header. And then we also have, uh, you know, authentication, right? So this itself takes about 200 lines of code. So this is what I want to show you about. So if you ever have this need to write something like this, how to develop something like this, take a look at this library, right? We started first line of code in you know, last year. And so far we have reached 1.7K GitHub stars. And then we have seen, uh, you know, uh, 10K plus installations. And uh, even though we don't know who installed it, but we know we are, I mean, from the feedback, we, we, we got the users from all, all over the place. Uh, now we have uh, also 100 uh, uh, plus forks. And then on GitHub, we believe we have 100, uh, 350, uh, you know, repository uh, using our, uh, you know, library and share their code. So what, how it works, right? And then we build a lot of widget. And then we also give you a different method for you to build web apps. So basically we uh, support input and pin as your input functions. All right, if you want to make your web input, you allow you to, to do. And then we give you a logic control um, mechanism, right? And there's a lot of parameters for you to call. For example, your function of callback, we, we also support on change. We support in block, uh, blocking uh, you know, uh, flow. We also support async, right? So, and then after, uh, you go through with this logic control, right? You have uh, some kind of functions you define by yourself, right? Those functions, you just call them through your logic control. And then after that, you want to also output something, right, to users. So that's why you have this output, right? And then we also support some layout, right? So you can see by doing, by, by providing these four building blocks, Actually, you can make a lot of complicated things, right? So the logic flow can work uh, from uh, jump from one block to another block. So basically, we're uh, we calling ourselves a Lego store for web widget and web control flow, right? So on the right hand side is a simple application. It's a pseudo code, right? You import some uh, you know, uh, libraries and then functions, and you define your own functions. I define main function, which where is the app functions, and you get some data from uh, users, and then you process data using your own functions, and then you output your your process data, right? And then the last line is really give you a, a way. Hey, how do you want to serve this web app, right? So it's also we don't want to re reinvent the, the wheel, so we and be easily integrated with existing your web stack. For example, if you already build a web application using Django, or you already have a, your company already have a you know, application using Flats, easy, right? You can use web, PyWebIO to write one or many, two many pages, and then use some kind of custom APIs to integrate with your existing uh, web application. So far, we haven't seen any other libraries have this kind of uh, support to uh, you know, straightforward integration with existing uh, your web stacks, right? So there's something more, right? And then as I mentioned here, I mean, we try to make a uh, very pathonic, right? Hey, we want to, we, we don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm building a web page. We want you to feel like I'm writing Python script and I happen to use web input as my input. I, happen to use web output to show my data, right? This is the, 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 law, the philosophy behind the design, right? And then we use code to define everything, right? Python code to define everything, including UI part, including the applications, including the business logic, including the backend part, right? And uh, we are also MIT licensed, so feel free to fork it, make whatever you want, uh, you know, if you feel like they can also benefit the, the bigger community to a PR. And also, 
uh, your data is your data, right? And how you use it is your job. We don't uh, check telemetry data at all, period, right? And we, we don't need to know who downloaded this, uh, who used this, what function has been called more than other functions, right? We just, you know, build what we think is be useful and then we listen to our customers and we talk to them one-on-one one -on -one, and then to understand what's useful, what's not. Okay, and then I think I have a couple more minutes. So there's two ways you can start Power Web application development. Number one, you can just keep install it, right? You install it and uh, you uh, use your favorite IDE to write a script and then finish it, go back to your uh, terminal and run Python uh, space your app.py. And then your application will be run uh, on one port uh, on your local host, right? This is one way. Another way is, okay, if you don't want to set up your local environment, you think, hey, I want an easier way to, 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 to get started, join uh, Power Bio Cloud, right? Set up here, ping me, I will give you an invitation code and then start to writing the code in the, in the, in the ID on the left hand side, push a button to show your preview Push that button to make it online. As simple as that. Right. And then there's some resources. I'm going to share this uh, deck with the community and then maybe on Slack or maybe uh, Grace have a better way to share it. And uh, if you have a, you know anything want to know, it, including hey, if you don't not sure how to get started or if you have idea of building apps. Uh, you want to get some, you know, uh, insights, or if you say, "Hey, I have been using this, but I see the lacking of feature," talk to me, right? And then, or join our Slack channel. Uh, sorry, uh, Discord channel to talk talk to us. All right. Uh, I've seen two questions. Is this modeled after some of the newer uh, web uh, library like React? Uh, it, yes and no, right? We definitely take a lot of inspiration from React, and then we should build into Python, but. Uh, we also have our own thought because you know if you use JavaScript, the things will be different than Python. And then Douglas asking, hey, what does the core maintainer group roadmap for this project look like? That's very good questions. And then we're trying to publish, uh, we're trying to, to 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 put up a you know a, a roadmap uh, as as soon as possible, and then maybe share with you. How does it react with the CSS of uh, Django application? Basically, you can use this to, for example, you, you are, if you already have Jinja template, you can use this to modify Jinja template and serve it. And then we also support some kind of uh, customized uh, CSS, right? Jump to our, I mean, come to our documentation. We, we for, I mean, to some extent, we can support CSS. And then, by the way, to to the first, I mean, the first milestone we, we already hit, hit is to uh, make the, the entire, you know, uh, building block works. The next, you know, focus will be hey, how to make it a little bit prettier. All right. Okay, my time is up. Uh, thank you very much for for your attention, and uh, hope let's uh, catch up soon.